2.1 midpoint of a line segment. This time we're going to talk about the right bisector. Okay, so when I say the word equidistant, this means equally distant. Okay, so the right bisector, or it's also called the perpendicular bisector. When I think of these two words right here, when I think of right, I think of two lines that meet at 90 degrees. And when I think of the word bisect, I think of the midpoint or the middle, right? To bisect, to cut in half. So the right bisector is a line that passes through the midpoint of a line segment and intersects it at 90 degrees, okay? To be clear, this does not, oh, I have it here, does not have to go through the opposite vertex, okay? Does not. So, right, think of a right angle, which have negative reciprocal slopes. Okay, and bisector, think of some, cutting something in half or, of course, the midpoint. Okay, so these are the steps here. Um, first, I would definitely plot. I always draw, and even if it's just a sketch, I still draw it. Uh, find the midpoint, that's easy. And then what we're going to do this time is we're going to find the slope and then take the negative reciprocal. Okay, we're going to find the slope of the original line segment, take the negative reciprocal, and that's going to give us the slope to our, our right bisector. And then we have the slope of our right bisector. We have a point x comma y. Sub those in, solve for b, and then rewrite. Okay, example one, let's draw the triangle DEF, okay? So D is negative two, four, so negative two, four. E is eight comma zero. So this is D, this is E. And we have F, which is six comma six. Okay, so that's our triangle. So now, first, let's find the midpoint of EF. Okay, so EF, I'm going to ballpark that it's 7, 3, but never just ballpark it. We're going to actually solve for it, okay? So capital M, midpoint of EF. Okay, so E, we have 8 and 6, and then 0 and 6. 8 plus 6, let's average those out. 0 plus 6, let's average those out, okay? 8 plus 6 is 14, so we get 7 comma 3. So, yeah, 7 comma 3. I think I said 7 too, but it is 7 3. Okay, and let's call that capital M. So, we drew the triangle. We found the midpoint. So, now let's actually find the slope of EF. Okay, slope, which is small m, of EF. We're going to do, we have to do the change in y over the change in x, okay? So delta y, let's go 6 minus 0, and just be consistent. So I'm doing f first and then e, so 6 minus 0, 6 minus 8. And I get 6 over negative 2, which is negative 3, okay? So the slope of ef is negative 3. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to draw a line from the midpoint of EF, and I'm going to draw a line that's perpendicular. So if our slope of EF is negative 3, the perpendicular slope is 1 over 3. Remember, 3 is over 1, and to find the negative reciprocal, we flip the fraction, and then we change the sign from negative to positive. So let's graph this. Let's start at m, and let's go up 1 over 3. Okay, but then I'm going to go down 1 to the left 3. Down 1 to the left 3. And if we take a look at this line right here, down 1 to the left 1, 2, 3, this line is definitely perpendicular to EF. Okay, so we've found the slope of EF, and then we've obviously found the perpendicular slope, and then that's going to help us with our right bisector, specifically with the word right, okay? The midpoint is going to help with the word bisect, okay, right bisector. 
Okay, we drew the line from the midpoint perpendicular to EF. Okay, so this line right here, and I'll put some arrows on it because it does extend in both directions forever and ever. What we're going to do is we're going to solve for the equation of our right bisector. Okay, so we already have the slope and the, and the point. So the slope is one third, and our point is 7 comma 3. So we sub this into y equals mx plus b. We have 3 equals 1 third 7 plus b. 3 equals 7 over 3 plus b. Move that over. 3 minus 7 over 3 equals b. Okay. And you can skip all these steps if you're able to. So we need a common denominator. Common denominator is going to be 3. So let's multiply by 3 over 3. We get 9 over 3 minus 7 over 3. So my b is 2 over 3. Okay. If you take a look, if we look at the y-intercept, this is indeed 2 over 3. Therefore, the equation of the right bisector is y equals 1 third x plus 2 over 3. So the right bisector doesn't necessarily have to have uh, a triangle associated with it. Um, we can determine the equation of the right bisector to a line segment. Okay, so just simply we need a line segment. So um, let's plot A, which is negative 4, negative 7, and B, which is 10, comma 1. Okay, and you draw a line. Okay, so first what we want to do is we want to find the midpoint. I'm guessing it's going to be somewhere around here, but again, we don't want to guess, so let's find the midpoint, which is capital MAB, average out the x's, which is negative 4 plus 10 over 2, average out the y's, negative 4 plus 10 is 6 over 2, I get 3, negative 7 plus 1 is negative 6, I get negative 3. So 3, negative 3, that's actually exactly where it was. Okay, that's a good check. You want to do it algebraically, but that's it's always a good check to plot it and to see if like you're close. Okay, so we know we need the bisector part. We got that. Now let's deal with the right part. We know that our slope has to be perpendicular to AB. Okay, so it's delta y over delta x, the change in y. So let's go one minus negative seven. And then let's put that over the change in x, 10 minus negative four. Okay, I get 8 over 14. I'm just going to divide these both by 2. Okay, I get 4 over 7. So the slope of AB is 4 over 7. So we want the slope that's perpendicular to that. So our new slope is going to be the negative reciprocal. So flip the fraction, we get 7 over 4, and we're going to go from a positive to a negative. That's going to be our new slope. And now all we want to do is we want to actually find the equation of the line, okay? So we use y equals mx plus b. You sub in your x and y, which is 3 comma negative 3. You sub in your new slope, and we solve. Negative 21 over 4. Bring that over. Negative 3 plus 21 over 4. Okay, we need a common denominator. Multiply this by 4 over 4. So I get negative 12 over 4 plus 21 over 4. I get b equals negative 9 over 4. 12, 31, 20, 21. 9 over 4. Okay, let's actually think about that logically. 9 over 4. Okay, so logically we have 3 comma negative 3. Let's apply the slope, negative 7 over 4. So we can go down 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 
One, two, three, four. Let's plot one more. So let's go up seven, left four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four. So this is going to be the, the line of the right bisector. Okay, and let's check. Nine over four is like two and a quarter. So it's like 2.25 if you divided it. And that looks pretty good because if I drew this with a ruler, it would definitely just be over two. So that looks pretty accurate to me. You can double check the calculation. So therefore, the equation of the right bisector is y equals negative 7 over 4x plus 9 over 4. Example 3. Two schools are located at points P and Q. So let's go ahead and plot these. P is negative 1 comma 4. And Q is 7 comma negative 2. Okay, so these are the two schools on a town map. The school board is planning a new sports complex to be used by both schools. And the board wants to find a location equidistance. So if you think equal distance uh, from the two schools. Use an equation to represent the possible locations for the sports complex. Okay, so what we're basically doing right now is we're finding, we're going to find the midpoint first. And a lot of students will stop at the midpoint and they'll say, oh, like we can put the sports complex here and then state what the midpoint is. So, but there's a little bit more to it. So let's find the midpoint first. We're going to average the x's, average the y's. It's 6 over 2 is 3. 4 minus 2 is 2. So I get 3 comma 1. I actually didn't think it was there, so that's good. that I double checked. 3 comma 1. Okay? So a lot of students are going to be like, oh, put it at 3 comma 1. But here's the issue. You can put it at 3 comma 1, but there's infinitely many solutions to this. Because what we're actually looking for is we're looking for the entire, I'm going to do a dotted line, the entire line where this sports complex can be located. Because it can be located anywhere on the right bisector. Okay, so let's find the slope of PQ. So negative 2 minus 4 over 7 minus negative 1. I get negative 6 over 8. I get negative 3 over 4. Okay, perpendicular to that, I get 4 over 3. Okay, and now let's find the actual right bisector. So we use the midpoint, we use the 4 over 3, and we plug it into the equation. So 1 equals 4 over 3 x plus b. This is beautiful because the denominator and the 3 cancel. So it's actually 1 equals 4 plus b. Bring over the 1 minus 4. And I get negative 3 equals b. Which makes sense because right here, that looks perpendicular. Okay, But just double checking, let's apply this slope of 4 over 3. So rise 1 Two, three, four, one, two, three. It's a little bit steeper than my my sketch. Okay, so the right bisector again, because it's perpendicular to PQ, it's going to be like every single point on the right bisector is going to be equidistant from P to Q. Like I'll show you one example in green. So if we put the, this force complex here, it's going to be the same distance as this. Okay, let's go orange. If we put it here, it's going to be the same distance as here. Okay, and so on and so forth. If we put it in another green, dark green. If we put it way down here, that's okay. Because all the information that all the information we have is that we want to find a location that's equidistant. Okay, but it doesn't actually have to lie on the line segment PQ. So therefore, the school. Board 
can, um, place the sports complex anywhere on the line y equals 4 over 3x minus 3.